This video introduces what binary classification problems are and the limitations of the most common metric for evaluating a model's performance on binary classification problems. Let's start a little further out and cover what supervised learning is. With a supervised learning problem, we have an input x and some outcome y that we're trying to map x to. So our goal is to learn some function that uses our input x to approximate some outcome y. Examples of supervised learning problems include regression problems, where we are trying to predict some specific numeric value. So uh, one example that we've gone to a lot in my Machine Learning Foundation series is this made up data set that I created where we're trying to predict a patient's forgetfulness based on how much Alzheimer's drug we provide to that patient. And so that forgetfulness can be measured as a number, a continuous number, like a float value. And so that means that we could use a regression model to predict that number, that measure of forgetfulness. Another great example of a regression model problem is sales of a product. So, you know, predicting whether there's going to be 10,000 sales of a product next quarter or 15,000. Again, that sales number is a continuous value and so is amenable to regression analysis. And as a third and final example, the value of an asset, typically in the future, is another common use case of a regression model. So the value of that asset would be in dollars, which again is a continuous number. And so this could be the future value of a stock price or a house or anything really. All right, so the other major class of supervised learning problem, other than regression, is classification. With classification problems, we're not predicting some continuous number. Instead, we're predicting whether some object belongs to a particular category. We can subdivide this classification category further by talking about multinomial problems where there are more than two classes that we're predicting. So for example, a common example in introductory deep learning textbooks and tutorials is to use this data set of handwritten digits. And there are 10 possible digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, that you could handwrite. And you could build a machine vision algorithm to classify any given sample of handwriting as to whether it's one of these 10 classes. So we have many classes, more than two classes. And so this is a multinomial classification problem. Another multinomial classification problem, again, a common deep learning example is using the ImageNet dataset, which contains millions of images on the internet that are broken into 21,000 classes. So if you build a machine vision algorithm, say a deep learning algorithm, to predict what an image is in the ImageNet dataset, it could be any one of 21,000 classes. So many, many different classes in the problem there. So the alternative to a multinomial problem is a binomial problem where we have only two classes that we're distinguishing between. So we can also call this a binary classification problem. As examples of such binary classification problems where there are only two categories to um, categorize, one example is movie review sentiment. So in natural language processing problems, um, this is a common hello world kind of data set where you get movie reviews from the Internet Movie Database, and half of these movie reviews are classified as positive reviews, and the other half are classified as negative reviews. And so you can build a natural language processing algorithm that reads in movie reviews and predicts, is it positive or is it negative? Those are the only two possible classes. And as one uh, final fun example, which we flesh out in a lot of detail in my book, Deep Learning Illustrated, and is inspired by the HBO series, Silicon Valley, is predicting whether a photo of fast food corresponds to a hot dog or not a hot dog. So some other type of fast food, it could be a burger or pizza or whatever, but the key thing here is there are only two classes we're predicting, either an image is a hot dog or it isn't.
The most common way to evaluate performance on a binary classification problem is to take the outputs from your model. So typically, you'll end up with a range of outputs over the range of 0 to 1 as to whether a given input corresponds to one class or the other. So we could have our hot dog predicting model say, you know, I don't think this picture is a hot dog, or I do think this picture is a hot dog. And if our model assigns a value, an output value very close to zero, then this is suggestive that the algorithm is very confident that this image is not a hot dog. In contrast, up here, something with an output value of 0 0.9, 0 0.95, or 0.99, that suggests very high confidence that the model, the algorithm, thinks that the input image is a hot dog. So what we can do with all of the various outputs from our model is we can put this um, single threshold, and the single threshold point that we typically use is 0.5. And we say, well, any output that is less than 0.5, we say that the algorithm has predicted that this is not a hot dog. Or if it's above 0.5, then any of these predictions up here, we're saying that the algorithm is saying that this is a hot dog. The problem with this approach is that it can hide differences in model outputs that you can't get just by looking at the single threshold. So for example, here's another model applied to the same problem. The specifics of the problem don't really matter, <laughs> but these, these are real world outputs by two different models. And as you can see in the model here on the right, the model is more confident about its predictions. So there are more predictions very close to one and more predictions very close to zero. There are relatively fewer predictions in the middle section here relative to this model. And so, we could potentially be missing out on something here. It looks like this model, assuming it's classifying correctly, or at least as correctly as this model, we should think that this model is better because it's more confident about its hot dog predictions or its not hot dog predictions relative to this other model. Yeah, so one problem with having this single threshold is that it doesn't reflect model quality at other points in the output distribution other than distinguishing outputs that are less than or greater than that single threshold value. Another weird thing about this single threshold is that if the true outcome is one, so if we know that some image really is a hot dog, according to this single threshold, a prediction of 0.49 just slightly below orange is 100% wrong. Meanwhile, a prediction of 0.51 just above the orange threshold is considered 100% correct. But in practice, I mean, our model doesn't actually have much more confidence in either of these scenarios. So this seems like a wild swing. And then a follow-on from this is that a prediction of 0.51 is considered just as correct as a prediction of 0.99. So this also doesn't really make any sense. We should be considering the algorithm to be more correct in the circumstance where it has an output of 0.99 and, you know, it really is a 1 relative to when it outputs 0.51 and it really is a 1. It was much less confident and so it doesn't deserve as much kudos as in this scenario. The solution to this single threshold issue is to use another metric called the area under the curve of the receiver operating characteristic. And over the next couple of videos, I'll explain exactly how we calculate this. Cool. Up next is a video on the confusion matrix, something that is an essential stepping stone to understanding the ROC-AUC metric.